I will never forget the first time I ever went alone into the backcountry because I was completely unprepared for the fear that would set in while back there. Listen, this was probably 10 years ago. I had not been hunting more than once in my life and had not really been out in the woods roughing it in any way since the Boy Scouts. But I had this um, unjustified confidence going out there because of my time in the Scouts. So as life started to take shape and I was rocking a career and a wife and a kid and all, all those things that I love, there was also this, this stirring call of the wild, if you will. And I just felt this, this feeling I couldn't explain that I just wanted to get back into the wilderness. So I thought back on my Boy Scout years and remembered a couple of trips that were probably my favorite, which were backpacking trips into the Superstition Mountains. The Superstitions are this amazing mountain range here in central Arizona that is just chock full of like folklore and ghost stories and some pretty tragic pieces of history, if I'm honest. Uh, but I just can't get enough of the scenery and the, the ruggedness of the whole thing out there. And so as I started to do my research, I landed on this destination called Rivas Ranch. Rivas Ranch is named after the old Elisha Rivas, the crazy old dude in the 1800s who left his wife and family in, like, Ohio or someplace, not exactly a role model, and decided to head west. He wandered back into this mountain range and found this, this clearing, which you wouldn't believe it unless you saw it, because you hike through seven or eight miles of just the most rugged, desolate desert landscape, and then you get high enough in elevation, you find yourself back in this bowl in the mountain range, where it is more like a pine forest, and everything is green, and there's this perennial stream that runs through, and it's incredible. Well, old Elisha felt the exact same way and decided to build a ranch there way back in the day. He planted crops, he hauled farming equipment in there, there's an apple orchard. It, it's incredible. And he would take a mule cart out every so often to sell his produce in the nearby town of Mesa. But this is an incredibly popular destination for backpackers because it's one of the few places in the range where you can count on water being there when you get back in there. So I went to my wife and said, I want to get out in the wilderness. I want to take a solo overnight trip to this place. And she essentially said, well, your life insurance is paid up, so whatever, go ahead. No, what she actually said was, do you know how to do that? Which, ladies, just hurts us deep in our soul. But that's beside the point. I was going on this trip. So I started getting all my gear together and started doing all the research that I needed to, to make sure I wasn't going to get lost or, or come up against something that I was not prepared for. And as I did my research, I discovered a little fact about Rivas Ranch, which is that because of the apple orchard that old Elisha planted that still produces apples, it's not uncommon to see bears in the area. Great! Bears! So I thought back on my Boy Scout training about what are you supposed to do if you run into a bear. And I realized that I had two different ideas floating around in my head that I had picked up somewhere. One is that you like make yourself all big and you make a bunch of noise and try to scare the bear off. And the other was that you play dead. It occurred to me, as I considered those options, that if one of those is correct, you really don't want to do the other one. I, I can't think of two more different reactions to a bear encounter. So I went to the trusty Google machine to figure out what I should do in case I encounter Elijah Rivas's bear friends. It turns out the correct answer is that it depends. Perfect, wonderful, thanks internet. No, it turns out that uh, which answer is correct depends on the type of bear you're dealing with. So grizzly bears, way up north, like Alaska, Yukon stuff, uh, giant brown bears with a huge hump on their back. Those are the play dead bears. Those things will mess you up. But black bears, much smaller, more docile and timid generally, the only type of bears I was going to possibly encounter here in Arizona, those are the make a bunch of noise, scare them away bears. Essentially, the internet said, uh, if you act big and loud enough, they'll get scared and they'll just run away most of the time. Most of the time? Like, well, what about the other times? Like, what do you do then when that doesn't work? Turns out that if a black bear charges you, if, if scaring it away doesn't work and it comes at you, you don't run away. 
because it can run faster than you. You don't climb a tree because it can climb better than you. If a black bear charges you, you grab whatever you can find as a weapon, stand your ground, and fight the bear. Yes. See, now this is where the, the male mind is revealed as being twisted and weird. Because there is a very real and logical part of me that reads that description and thinks, Oh man, wow, I, I really hope that doesn't happen. But there's an equally real part of me that says, <laughs> I kind of hope this happens. I mean, what a story to tell, right? I, I could picture myself inviting people over and I'd, I'd open the door and I'd have this scar down my face like I'm a Bond villain. And, and they'd be like, dude, what happened to your face? And I would point to the bear pelt hanging on my wall and say, that happened to my face. So I grab all my gear and head off into the wilderness to fight a bear. The day I hike in, it's gorgeous, unseasonably cool. I make my seven or eight mile trek through this pretty gnarly terrain. And sure enough, I come upon this clear meadow in a pine forest with, with old farm tools and, and the foundation of the ranch house. The, the creek is running through. And so I just I pick a spot, set up camp, filter some water. I've got a fire going. Um, I'm cooking my meal over the fire as these deer just walk through my camp like they don't care about me at all. It's awesome. That part of me that just wanted to be outdoors is completely satisfied. Like it is, I am one with nature and this is amazing. And then it got dark. And the wilderness turns into a much different place when it's dark. I'm sitting there on this stump next to my fire. I can't see more than 10 feet in any direction. And I have a head packed full of bear fighting information and I'm starting to freak out. I'm trying to like keep my thoughts under control and get a hold of myself and be like, okay, just, just be a man. But all I can think about is how my truck is seven miles that direction through some of the most insane terrain I've ever hiked. And there's no way I'm getting out of there. I am stuck here at this ranch until morning, no matter what. And just as that thought is starting to like send me into a panic attack, I hear a little stick snap in the tall grass behind me. So I grab my flashlight and I whip around and look and there's nothing there. Okay, it's just in your head, it's just the wind, you're fine, be a man, calm down. Sure enough, another rustle in the grass. I flip around with my flashlight, nothing. This happens five or six times where there's this mystery sound and I shine my light on it as it gets closer and there's still nothing there. At this point, I have to assume it's the ghost of Elisha Rivas riding a ghost bear to come and destroy me. And then, as I'm faced with this decision, whether to utterly lose my mind or somehow just man up and deal with it, this wave of courage or testosterone or foolishness washes over me. And I start having th these thoughts play out in my head where, where I'm telling myself, like, dang it, you're a man. You are at the top of the food chain. You don't, you, you don't sit here in the dark being scared of some invisible ghost bear. Like, you just, you deal with whatever it is because you're a man. And right as that thought passed it through my mind, I hear another twig snap behind me. And so this time I grab my flashlight and I stand up and I swing my leg over the log because I'm just going to charge whatever this is. Like, let's do this, bear. Let's finally have it out. And just as I take that first step into the grass, a bunny rabbit jumps out at me. I let out a scream reminiscent of a wounded baby goat. <coughs> I trip over the log I was sitting on. I almost fall into my own campfire. And little bunny Fufu just goes skipping off into the night like nothing ever happened. Like I had the nerve to frighten him. And so... Before I can fall over, I sort of guide myself down and sit back on the log. My heart rate is through the roof. I'm just trying to breathe and, and process what has just happened and the fact that I'm not actually going to die. And then it hits me just how ridiculous my reaction was. Like, I see it all play out in my head again in slow motion and how I, a grown man, just screamed at the top of my lungs because of a tiny little bunny. And I gave up. I just realized, like, well, the, the night is over. What's I am not a man. Uh, I'm going to climb into my tiny little tent, curl up in my sleeping bag, and wait for a real bear to come and eat me alive. Because that can't be worse than how 
utterly defeated I feel right now. And so I climbed in my tent. I had the worst night's sleep I've ever had in my life. And eventually, the sun came back out. And it's, it's beautiful again, right? Now I'm happy to be here. I'm still at this ranch. I'm in this majestic place. There's a creek running by. It's all wonderful. If I saw a bunny right now, it'd be great. The point? The backcountry is scary, my friends. You can get used to it. There's some tricks you can use to overcome that. But it never stops being at least a little bit scary when it's just you and the wilderness and a long, dark night to survive through. But don't let that fear or the potential for fear convince you to, to head back to the truck and pack it up and never get out there, never do anything adventurous. Because it's so worth it to power through and figure out how to survive out there. If nothing else, whatever happens on your solo trip into the backcountry, it's not going to be more embarrassing than what I just shared. So put that in your back pocket, load up your pack, get out there, and do something cool. <laughs>